Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Well, for the mid-cap index, it's actually now down around 335 odd points. So it's definitely a much, much extended loss that we're seeing for the mid-caps, almost down around 2 odd percent with a weak advance decline ratio. To put it into perspective on the Bombay Stock Exchange, there are 500 stocks advancing to around 1,700 stocks which are declining. Uh, there is some news coming in with regards to, I think, cigarette packets. So obviously the likes of Godfrey Phillips as well as ITC would be... Um, uh, SE refuses to stay a notification on the full-length graphic images with regards to cigarette uh, uh, packets, which will come into effect on the 1st of September. But we do have Ashwini Gujral to talk about the weakness that we're seeing in the markets right now. Ashwini, hi, over to you. Well, it seems as though the mid-caps are extending their pain. See, mid-caps, I don't think there is a lot of buying now. So a lot of fall is happening you know, because there are no buyers and there are no triggers. So, you know, I think this is cost of capital decline. A lot of people are saying that, you know, fundamentals are good and this is good and that is uh, good. But the problem is very fundamental that the buying that was there because of cost of capital last year, that is kind of vanished. Now, as far as indices is concerned, I think uh, on that, intraday because we fell on thursday from the highs fell on friday fell even today so my sense is this could be some intraday inflection point we have covered our uh, bank nifty shorts and that is the recommendation i would think if you buy here and keep a stop of about 10950 recommendation i would think if you buy here and keep a stop of about 10950 uh, 960 on banks, uh, maybe uh, 27, 650 thereabouts. There is a good chance that uh, there could be a recovery by the second half of the day because right now we are in the frame of mind where I think we are in this 10,000, 950, 960 to about 11,060 kind of uh, uh, mode. And even if we have to fall further, chances are we are now getting fairly close to support and shorts should be covered. Uh, as I said, we have taken intraday longs. As far as uh, individual uh, stocks are concerned, IGL is a buy with a stop of 254, target of 268. CESC is a buy with a stop of 910, target of 936. And Walkhart is a sell with a stop of 612, target of 590. Same for Nifty as well. I mean, if you're short, cover your shorts. Ashwini? I would think so because uh, yeah. 10,950, 960 is a support zone and it's not like global markets are uh, crashing here. So this is a kind of place where you don't want to be short because if the market reverses, all these guys will be trapped on the other side. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about a couple of these stocks which are just going from strength to strength? HUL, Bajaj Finance, HDFC, HDFC Bank. At the risk of repetition, uh, Ashwini, what would you recommend on those? See, this is not the case just in India. I was reading in entire mm. Asia, people are moving towards safer stocks. Mm. You know, rates going up, you know, uncertainty, trade war. These are the kind of stocks which will keep you safe. I don't think taking fancy risks right now will really play out in the foreseeable future. And what would you recommend for a stock such as Dr. Reddy's or maybe the pharmaceutical stocks which everyone was so incrementally positive on? Today, yes, it might be restricted restricted to a one-day decline. We don't know. But overall, what would you recommend based on the texture that we're seeing? You know, it's not great fun that you hold something it falls 8%, whatever the problem. And mm -hmm. why shouldn't I buy Hindustan Lever? Mm -hmm. No FDA there. Why shouldn't I buy Bajaj Finance? So, you know, these guys, I don't know what they are doing. They need to sort this out because otherwise investors will lose interest. Nobody likes to lose money. <laughs> okay. All right, Ashmi, thanks very much. Appreciate you joining in, and uh, we'll see you again soon in, our, in an hour, that is. Okay, so, I mean, Ashmi is, is making the point that if you're already short, you could actually cover your uh, nifty and bank nifty shorts. You could see actually some reversal coming through the, uh, through the course of the day. 
Uh, I mean, we were down 52, I think, when uh, we sp started speaking with Ashwini. We were already uh, recovering about 10, 12 odd points in that uh, time period. <clears throat> we learned from uh, sources that LIC board is likely to give a go-ahead to increasing its stake in IDBI Bank. It meets later, the board meets later today. I mean, actually, I think uh, the time was 11. Yash Jain is now joining in uh, to tell us what expectations really are. And, uh, you know, apart from a broad headline approval for that investment to take place, what are the, some of the other things which the LIC board w uh, could discuss in their meeting today? Yash, morning. Well, thank you so much, Prashant. If you remember, June 29th was the date when the insurance regulator, IRDA, gave its approval to LIC to raise its stake in IDBI Bank to up to 51%. And today, July 16th, we are given to understand that the board of LIC, uh, which is Life Insurance Corporation of India, the meeting is underway to essentially give an approval for this particular transaction. Transaction. Of course, the headline approval would be to allow LIC to raise its stake to up to 51% from the current 10.82%, but there would be other finer details which would also be discussed in today's board meeting. The most important one, LIC board members will discuss a turnaround plan as far as IDBI Bank is concerned, and the key elements of this particular turnaround plan would be discussed later on with the finance ministry then. Also, uh, importantly, LIC would uh, decide on the names of the nominee directors, which from the insurer's side would sit on the board of IDBI Bank. We are given to understand that LIC could give out names of about two to three nominee directors. Third and the most important one would be LIC would also discuss a timeline which they see as far as decreasing their stake from that up to 51 percent to mandated 15 percent is concerned. So all these three important points uh, would be discussed in today's board meeting and we expect some clarity on them. Okay, all right, Yash, we're going to keep following up with you with regards to this particular board meeting. There is some recovery which is underway. Uh, we were down about 55, nearly 55 points. We're down 43 now, so a uh, slight uptick uh, which is coming through. Mid-cap index, no such luck. We're down about 318 points. That's about one and three quarters of a percent. Let's put up DCB Bank uh, stock now. I mean, it's uh, lower in trade and sharply so. It reported uh, what was uh, a disappointing set of earnings for the quarter, 164 or so. On DCB Bank, Abhishek is here with uh, what went what went wrong as far as the numbers are concerned. Abhishek, over to you. Well, to begin with, uh, the loan growth has been pretty strong, but the PNL growth has been pretty weak. So the loan growth at 30.6% is the highest in seven quarters, while the net interest margin at 3.9% is the lowest in 11 quarters. And for third consecutive uh, quarter, you know, the NIA growth has been lagging behind the loan growth. So due to lower NIA growth coupled with lower treasury income, the operating uh, profit growth was just at 3.7%. That is the lowest in last eight quarters. And the uh, slipper in absolute value have been the highest in last 11 quarters. That led to a slight hiccup in asset quality as gross NPA increased to 1.86 versus 1.79 percent in the previous quarter. So while you had NII growth at 17 percent, profit growth was at just six and a half percent and that is why the stock is taking a beat in trade today. Okay, all right, uh, Abhishek, thanks very much for that. So like I mentioned, the other one to watch out for would probably be something like a federal bank, which is at a 52-week low, but many PSU banks, in fact, at 52-week lows today, not talking about federal, but uh, which is a private bank. The others such as Union Bank, as well as OBC, Oriental Bank of Commerce, and many others, which are languishing today as well. But uh, nonetheless, the other stock in focus is PC Jewelers. That stock is down over 20% on a uh, today on the basis that the company has withdrawn its buyback which it had proposed earlier. Sonal is here with all of the details. Sonal, over to you. Thanks a lot for that, Ekta. And you, as you rightly pointed out, the stock is down in trade today. That is because the company has withdrawn its buyback proposal that it put forth back in May. The company had announced that it will be buying back share worth 424 crore rupees. And yesterday it informed the exchanges that they have not received the requisite NOC from its bankers. And the bankers have told the company that they should focus on the growth of the company and should not do something that will lead to cash outflows. But instead, they should focus on reducing the uh, huge amount of debt and the interest cost that is there in the company's PNL, and that's why this particular buyback was withdrawn and uh, def clearly the street didn't like it and the stock is down in trade today. Back to you. All right, Sonal, thanks very much. Appreciate uh, that uh, uh, commentary on uh, that stock. We take a very quick break here. Well, the market is down 41, uh, so we're keeping a closed track. Well, Ajay Bodke of Prabhudas Leeladhar is now with us to discuss the fundamentals of the market. Ajay, hi, thanks very much for joining in this morning. Well, it's definitely a lot of pain that we're seeing for the mid-caps and renewed pressure for a lot of stocks as well. Uh, what are you recommending to your clients? Uh, good morning, Ekta. 
I think uh, in view of the heightened uh, risk aversion that one is seeing uh, in so far as emerging market flows are concerned, uh, one, one, one should sort of know, uh, investors are embracing uh, large cap quality stocks and a lot of emphasis is being laid on uh, those companies which have very solid balance sheets uh, generating strong free cash flows and high ROEs. And the reason why one is seeing a gravitation towards uh, uh, some of the large cap names is essentially uh, being underpinned due to this uh, uh, risk aversion. Now, in my view, I think uh, we'll continue to focus on uh, uh, domestic focused franchises and uh, our portfolio remains overweight on uh, retail focused uh, private banks, uh, NBFCs. Uh, one is seeing very strong uh, numbers from the auto sector continuing. So that again remains an overweight for us, uh, along with the uh, uh, retail and FMCG uh, names. Uh, we are constructive on the IT companies uh, because one is continuing to see very strong uh, demand uh, growth, especially in the US, uh, uh, underpinning very strong uh, demand uh, growth, especially in the US, uh, uh, underpinning uh, the outperformance in that sector. Uh, but we are still very cautious on pharmaceuticals. Uh, we believe that I think the margins will bottom out only a quarter or two later. And hence, uh, uh, one needs to be cautious on the pharma names. Uh, and also sort of, you know, uh, in case of uh, the, uh, the investment cycle, I think the infrastructure part of investment cycle is chugging along quite well, be it roads, railways or power transmission. But the industrial part of CapEx, in our opinion, is still uh, at least a year, year and a half away because the capacity utilizations in the industry uh, is running between say 70 to 75 percent in various industries. So it will be a good year, year and a half before the industrial side of CapEx picks up. So that's the overall portfolio construct that we are advising uh, investors sort of you know, to adopt uh, to uh, ensure that the current state of uh, heightened risk aversion, one rides it out successfully. Ajay, just wanted some feedback from you. If you, uh, I mean, in your conversation, etc., conversations rather, uh, is the PMS, the alternate fund industry, seeing uh, redemptions? Because that is not tracked. Mutual funds, we get data every month. Uh, but uh, the other uh, uh, PMS and uh, alternate funds, etc., that is now is a pretty large component of the market, uh, and it has grown by leaps and bounds over the last two or three years. Are we seeing redemptions there? Pressure there? Yeah, I think uh, the PMS industry uh, still is uh, minuscule as compared to the total mutual fund uh, size that one uh, has in India. And uh, if one takes a medium term perspective, and there are also the con constraints that have come in so far as the portfolio construct for many mutual funds are concerned, especially with SEBI, ensuring that uh, the funds remain true to label. And uh, also in so far as the uh, uh, commission structures are concerned, there are also uh, a lot of uh, constraints that the SEBI has uh, imposed. And that's why I think this part, the alternate investment part, in our opinion, will continue to see a heightened interest. And over the next two or three years, I think you know we see a strong growth continuing in the industry, the base being very small. At the same time, I think to answer your question, one cannot be divorced from the, uh, the overall realities. And if one's seeing a slight slowdown in the domestic inflows in mutual fund industry is concerned, I think the same is also mirroring in so far as uh, PMS and alternatives are concerned. However, I think uh, there is no large scale pressure on redemptions in uh, the uh, PMS industry and in the AIFs because many AIFs also are closing debt structures where investors have committed money with a three to five year perspective. And uh, 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 so, so I think, you know, uh, I don't see that there's any large redemption pressure in the alternative space. Mm. Okay, Ajay, just wanted to get back to micros. Um, Tata Motors has now become the top loser on the Nifty on a year-to-date basis. It's the worst performing stock in 2018 within the Nifty stocks, down 41% now. Uh, what I'm sure you get a lot of queries and there are many of the opinion that maybe it's a value buy at these levels. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think I tend to agree with you. Uh, I think it has been value buy for some time. I think after a very robust presentation by the top brass of GLR and the uh, the, 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 the PV and CV heads in India, I think uh, the uh, sense that one got is that uh, we are somewhere close to bottoming out in so far as the valuations are concerned. However, I think the signals coming from Britain 
about whether one will have a hard exit, a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit is continuing sort of you know, to put uh, 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 pressure on the stock. But in my opinion, I think uh, some sort of uh, indication from uh, from from Britain about uh, the kind of uh, terms of engagement that they uh, 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 come up with EU, I think should give a clear signal in the medium term. Otherwise, in so far as launches are concerned, in so far as uh, the guidance, in so, uh, a, a bit guidance uh, over the medium term is concerned, uh, both for the domestic business and for uh, JLR business, I think the top brass is very focused on ensuring that uh, uh, the turnaround strengthens as we go forward in the next two or three years. I think uh, it is only during times, uh, such times of turbulence that one can find uh, uh, good franchises available at attractive prices. So one needs to be patient and take a two-year view and I think one can make uh, very good uh, returns in Tata Motors. I would just take you back two years and look at the state of uh, the IT majors, mm. Infosys or TCS was concerned. Everyone had given up hope on them. Everyone uh, just when, just before Trump uh, sort of you know, took charge, uh, six months prior to that and six months after he took charge. I think there were no buyers and funds were grossly underweight on the large cap IT names. And today you are finding uh, sort of you know, most of the funds trying now to embrace the IT names, large cap IT names and uh, sort of you know uh, rushing in. So I think a similar approach where if the franchise is good, market cap is strong, temporary sort of you know uh, turbulence in uh, uh, performance, one needs to ride it out but take a long term view and that's where you find actual multi-baggers. Uh, 46 lower uh, on the nifty so we are slipping once again but I must point out if you put the mid cap index up, it's now recovered uh, about 40-45 points over the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, yeah, so we were down about 325, 330 points. We're down 290 uh, odd points or so. So there is some recovery effort there. Advanced decline remains pretty poor. There's about five decline, uh, five decliners to about one stock which is advancing. Uh, listen in, uh, to my colleague uh, Jude uh, speaking with Vedanta Sterlite, uh, Vedanta owned Sterlite Copper. Uh, he spoke with the management. The company, of course, has been in news for quite a while now. The Supreme Court has asked the company to pay a fine of 100 crores for violation of environmental no uh, norms. Here's that conversation. The Supreme Court has uh, very clearly said that there may be, have been some deviations as per the Neary report, but these deviations are not so serious that they cannot be rectified. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court also said that uh, you know the plant our plant has operated for a certain period of time without a consent to operate mm -hmm. and that i can tell you is not because of our issue mm -hmm. we have been applying to the consent for the, for the renewal of the consent to operate every year and paid the fees uh, to the extent of 15 to 20 lakhs or whatever is the you know fees that uh, tnpcb charges but uh, tnpcb for you know because of their own procedural constraints or whatever they had not renewed it for a period of time so I would say that you know, for the fault of TNPCB for not renewing it, for not doing their procedural uh, aspect pro properly, we have been fined the 100, or rather I would say that we've been asked to deposit 100 crores to take care of any kind of environmental matters that needed to be done in the region. Now thereafter, this 100 crores has been deposited in 2013 with the collector. And this has, uh, since then, you know, it is the interest is uh, roughly around 40 crores out of this 40 crores, only 4 crores have been spent on roads and not on any kind of environmental aspect. So are we to assume that there was nothing wrong in the environment because of which the TNPC did not find any reason at all to spend the 40 crores? Two very important concerns continue to exist though. The first of course is the fact that, and this was pointed out by the Madurai bench of the Madras High Court as well, that you got the NGT clearance and the environmental clearance from the Ministry of Environment rather without having a public hearing. Your defense was that f considering it's located within, you know, an already assigned industrial complex, a public hearing wouldn't be necessary. But what's important to point out is also the fact that the industrial complex did not exist. It was a proposed expansion for your proposed plant as well. I don't agree with that. Was, did the entire industrial complex of SIPCOT ex was uh, set up in prior to 2006. And there is an EIA notification which but says very two, clearly. But phase two, of course, was applied for the in EIA. The EIA notification very clearly said that any industrial complex which was set up prior to 2006, uh, and any industry which was set up in such an in a industrial complex, did not get a public hearing.